Well hello and welcome. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV. Welcome to this video channel. Today I'm going to talk about NFED half-wave antennas. Now I've spoken about NFED half-wave antennas uh, quite a bit on this channel, uh, but I make no apologies because it's a very interesting, very useful antenna. And here we are, beginning of September, some nice sunny weather. The forecast is pretty good for the next uh, few weeks I believe but it is a reminder it should be a reminder to you that we are coming up to the winter and it's the September month and the month of October are great months to do antenna work so let's uh, uh, have a look at the NFED half-wave antenna some tips and tricks but first of all let me remind you the NFED half-wave antenna is a length of wire which is a half-wave length on the lowest band so let's say for example 40 meters it's 66 or 67 foot long that is connected to a 49 to 1 transformer and that transformer is then connected to your transceiver with coax cable so you only need a short length of coax cable to go from this transformer back to your transceiver you don't need a long length of coax cable to feed the a dipole which means to say no hanging uh, coax cable halfway down the garden and the good news is that you don't need an antenna tuner. Now that should be great news for those that are going to have or have got on order the IC705 because as at um, September 2020 or the beginning of September 2020 the IC705s have not arrived. But anyway for those that are waiting for the IC705 give this some thought because it's a great antenna. But I've, I've headed this um, video tips and tricks and what I want to, to do today is to cover some various topics that may make the antenna more interesting for you to use, may enable you to fit it into a smaller garden, may encourage you to go out and use it portable. So let's take a look at the options that are available. The first tip or trick I'm going to cover is how to convert a, uh, an infed half wave that covers 40 through to 10 meters, in other words a 66, 67 foot long um, half wave, how I'm going to convert that so that it covers 80 meters without adding much to its length. And the answer is that I use a, a loading coil and I'll put up on the screen now the loading coil in situ on uh, an antenna that uh, I've put up recently and as you can see it's just a simple coil uh, in series with the antenna it's actually attached to the end of the antenna and then there's another bit beyond that which brings it to resonance so how did it work and what happens to the other bands well let's take a, a closer look at the principle that I've used now here on the screen we've got the antenna on the right hand side you've got the 49 to 1 unun which is the transformer the right hand side feeds back to your transceiver the left hand side feeds to the half wave antenna in this case it's a 40 meter half wave which also works on the harmonics so it works on 20 15 and 10. that in turn connects to the loading coil and beyond that the resonating section for 80 meters now here's a close-up of the coil um, on the right hand side you'll see I've drilled a couple of holes that's to take the strain and on the left hand side you've got the 80 meter res resonator wire um, I've dropped mine down at an angle of 45 degrees but in fact you can drop it vertically that enables you to, to keep the space of the antenna as an absolute minimum this coil is also available commercially on our website it's known as the OJV-ATK and uh, you can uh, purchase it um, all ready to go. Now in the normal course of events that coil would purely act as a loading coil, it would lower the resonance of the antenna. But there comes a point when if you put enough turns on a coil not only becomes a loading coil but it also acts as a choke. And this is the trick. If you put enough turns on that coil it will isolate the resonator section, the 80 meter resonator section on the left, it will isolate that on all bands apart from 80 meters when it becomes a loading coil. So what actually happens is that coil acts as an insulator on all bands from 40 through to 10 meters, but on 80 meters it passes 
signal through, passes current through, and it becomes a loading coil and resonates the antenna on 80 meters. Now, there is also an advantage because the normal half wave end fed antenna works on harmonics. And if you think about it, if you on 80 meters, unless you put the resonant point fairly low in the CW section, all the other harmonics are going to land much higher and sometimes out of the top of the band. The beauty of this is that you can resonate the antenna on 80 meters any way you like, simply by adjusting that left hand resonator section. So you can resonate the antenna on the CW section or the phone section, and it won't have any effect at all on the rest of the bands. In other words, 40 through to 10 meters will be unaffected. Now you can wind your own coil if you want to. I in fact have used one of our commercial coils, but you need approximately 50 turns on a former of about two inches diameter. It's not super critical. The real acid test is that when you connect that coil to the end of your basic half wave, in other words, the antenna that covers 40 through to 10 meters, it shouldn't affect the resonance at all. Provided it doesn't affect the resonance, it's acting as a choke, and then all you need to do is to add a bit of extra wire around about probably three meters in order to bring resonance into the 80 meter band. It's all fairly forgiving. So if you, if you have 49 or 48 turns or 52 turns, it just means to say that that resonance section beyond the coil will be either slightly short or slightly longer to make up the difference. The main thing is that that coil should not affect resonances on the 40 through to 10 meter band. Now a number of uh, uh, you have um, inquired about the um, length of the half wave and how it can be made shorter. I think somebody was saying, well, they, they love 40 meters, but 66 or 67 foot of wire is just too long uh, to take around with them uh, when they're operating portable. Well, I can understand that because you think about portable operation, you think the great outside and there's, there's loads of room, but very often there's not as much room as perhaps you thought. Maybe there's a, w a wall in the way, the car park's not that big, there's a tree that's in a good position for a shorter length or longer length. Well, the answer is that if, for example, you want to operate on 20 metres and that's your favourite band, then you simply cut the antenna shorter so that it becomes a 33 or 34 foot length of wire, which is, which is, which is fine. But, on the other hand, if you want to operate on 40 metres and 66 foot is just too long for you, well, there is a, a way around it. You can actually load that antenna. So let's take a look at uh, those options for making the antenna shorter. Well, here's the neat trick. If you look at the top antenna there, what we do is we shorten the 40 meter half wave. In other words, the 66 foot of wire, we shorten it um, and insert a loading coil in the center. The reason we put the loading coil in the center is because that's when the where the loading coil has maximum effect, so it needs less turns. And the number of turns you put on there is really arbitrary. The more turns you put on there, then the shorter the antenna is. You should be able to get the antenna down to around about uh, 40 feet quite easily. I can't give you the exact number of turns and it doesn't really matter. Um, the more turns you put on, the shorter the antenna. Just remember, of course, that you don't want it to act as a choke. But um, I would think if you put around about 20, 20 turns on a uh, 20 or 25 turns on a two inch um, former, you'd be around about 40 feet long thereabouts. But it's an experimental um, project. It will work, but uh, I can't give you the uh, uh, exact um, details. Now, the uh, one below is um, perhaps even more interesting because what we're going to do here is we're going to have a 20 meter half wave. In other words, it's going to be 33 foot or thereabouts of wire. We're going to add a coil at the end and make that coil a choke um, on 20 meters. Now, again, I can't give you the exact dimensions, but I would imagine that around about um, 30, 35 turns of wire on a two inch former and um, say around about one and a half, two meters of wire beyond that, 
and that will give you an antenna that is resonant on 20 meters and 40 meters it'll be full size on 20 meters and it'll be significantly shorter on 40 meters so you could end up with about 40 foot of wire or thereabouts covering 20 and 40 and of course the 20 meter section will actually resonate on 10 meters but i've said as i said before you won't work an awful lot at the moment on 10 meters unless there's a sporadic e-opening you know one of the bands i really like operating on is uh, 17 meters or 18 megahertz it's a great band because it tends to open up in the afternoon um, and provides propagation that doesn't seem to be there on 14 megahertz I mean, i've often worked uh, stateside stations and stations in Canada um, simply by switching from 14 megs to 80 megahertz so it's a great band the problem is that if for example you, your antenna is tuned to 20 meters how can you make that end fed half wave also operate on 18 megahertz you certainly can't use it by using the normal harmonic relationship so let's take a look at the option there well we achieve this uh, trick by using a tuned trap. If you look at the drawing here, you'll see that we've got a half wave on 18 megahertz, which is about 26 feet. That's fed from the 49 to 1 unun. And um, there's a trap there tuned to 18 megahertz. So that traps off that part of the antenna. We've got an 18 megahertz trap, which isolates the 18 megahertz half wave but that trap will also pass any frequency apart from the narrow band within 18 megahertz so it will let the 14 megahertz or 20 meter signal pass through and all we need to do then is to add a short length of wire to resonate the antenna on 20 meters you can make your own trap there are details on the internet or alternatively a uh, company called Hari, H-A-R-I, make a range of ready-made traps. Now when we come to base station operation, I know there's, it's quite common these days to have short gardens. It's, it's the fashion, you have bigger houses and shorter gardens, which is great for the domestic uh, environment, but it's not so good for ham radio. But you know, the end-fed half-wave does offer some interesting opportunities. You can actually make the antenna fit into quite a small garden. So I'm going to take a look at that now and do some pretty crude drawings on the screen so that you can get some idea of what the options are. Well here we see the familiar inverted L configuration. The antenna on the left we feed at ground level and the antenna on the right we feed uh, in the air. In both cases the total antenna length is 40 feet which is quite a reasonable length and if you have a really small garden here's a way of getting a 40 through to 10 meter antenna into a length of around 26 feet and what about the radiation pattern of a, an infed half wave well it's very similar to a dipole um, and I'm going to put up on the screen here some shots showing you the radiation pattern of uh, the antenna based on a 40 meter uh, antenna but the principle applies whether the uh, baseband is 40 meters or, or 80 meters well here on the screen you see the four bands and it's the dark solid lines that you want to take note of which gives you the basic pattern of the antenna and working clockwise first of all we've got the 40 meter section which is a half wave dipole then on 20 meters the antenna becomes a full wave and on 15 meters it becomes one and a half waves and on 10 meters it becomes two full waves and it's quite interesting to see how the pattern changes uh, these patterns are derived from the antenna in a straight line but as soon as you start to bend it of course it modifies the pattern and basically as you bend the antenna so it becomes more omnidirectional but it gives you some idea of how the pattern works and how it may favor certain directions in your particular location there is a slight skewing of the radiation pattern uh, which is not shown here but basically the lobes tend to skew slight, slightly away from the feed point so 
the lobes are biased a bit towards the end of the antenna more than at a 90 degree baseline angle. The matching transformer is quite easy to make, I've done a video on that as well and you can take a look at that but alternatively there's some commercial balance available. Some questions often ask, what about the earth, do you need an earth? No you don't need an earth. Uh, do you need a counterpoise? No you don't need a counterpoise. Um, what about uh, the uh, what about a uh, line isolator? Well, yes, I would recommend a line isolator. That's standard practice, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I always use a nice is line isolator right at the point um, where it goes into the transceiver, not the other end, because that will cause problems, um, particularly with an NFED half wave. But put the line isolator at the point at which it goes into the transceiver. That will make it very docile, it'll have no problems and uh, um, because you've got the line isolated there your SWR readings are likely to be much more accurate than they are without a line isolator because SWR meters are quite sensitive to uh, RF on the outside, outside of the sheathing. So my recommendation is use a line isolator. I've used them without, particularly for portable, I don't bother, um, but uh, for home station use uh, I would recommend a line isolator. So there we are, I hope I've covered um, enough uh, tips and tricks for you to have a go at uh, um, building or installing your own NFET half wave. As I say, there's commercial ones available, you can build your own. Great antenna for the smaller garden, great antenna for portable operation. In both uh, scenarios it works extremely well and I would encourage you to give it a try. So as usual with these videos, I do appreciate you watching this video. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Please um, remember to press the subscribe button so that you'll be alerted to other upcoming videos. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Take care. Speak to you soon.